Hello students, our today's topic is heat transfer. I'm going to discuss about heat transfer here, but uh, first you need to know what is heat actually. If you know or if you understand the concept of heat, you can easily un uh, understand the concept of heat transfer, how the heat transfer from one body to another body. So let's start with what is heat actually. Uh, uh, we can define heat. Heat is basically a form of energy which result temperature difference across the boundary of system. Temperature difference across the boundary of system or we can also say uh, the heat is the amount of energy which is flowing from one body of matter to another, another body due to temperature difference or by any other means. Uh, basically, heat flows always from higher temperature to lower temperature or we can also say heat always flows from hot body to cold body. Basically, there are three modes of heat transfer. Uh, these three modes are conduction, convection and radiation. By these three modes, the heat is transferred from one uh, body to another body. Uh, so let's start with the conduction. Conduction is basically if we consider when two bodies are in direct contact, when two bodies, when two solid bodies are in direct contact and the heat is transferred between these two bodies, the body which are in direct contact. So this type of heat transfer, the, this type of mode of heat transfer is called conduction. For example, we can say uh, the heat will transfer from hot burner on the stove into a pan. That is a very common example of conduction. Or uh, uh, another example we can take as the heat transfer in radiator, heat transfer in heat exchanger, etc. There are a lot of examples of conduction. So the conduction is basically when the heat is transferred between two solid bodies which are in direct contact. Second mode is Convection. Uh, convection is basically when heat is transferred between solid and fluid system. When the heat is transferred from a solid body to uh, any kind of fluid or any kind of liquid, that type of heat transfer is called convection. For example, uh, we can say uh, the steaming cup of hot tea, that is also a common example of convection. Or another example is uh, we can say hot air balloon. Uh, in hot air balloon, generally heater inside the balloon heat the air so the air moves upward. So this is the example of convection. Third type of mode of heat transfer is radiation. Radiation is when heat transfer through electromagnetic waves between two bodies which are separated by empty uh, space or gases. Radiation is basically uh, when generally uh, the electromagnetic waves are used to transfer the heat from one body to another body. For example, uh, the microwaves from uh, microwave oven or uh, another example of radiation is the x-ray machine. So these are basic three modes of heat transfer by which the heat is transferred from one body to another body. If we consider any non-adiabatic system, so that non-adiabatic system is always depends on the temperature of surrounding and uh, the work of that system always depends on the path as well as the end condition of that adiabatic process. Uh, in uh, generally non-adiabatic processes, uh, some other type of energy transfer uh, also occurred because of the temperature difference. So because of the temperature difference between the system and surrounding, the type of energy transfer those generally occurred, that type of energy transfer is generally called heat. The energy transfer because of temperature difference between the system and surrounding. Uh, and as I already told you, the heat is always flow from higher temperature to lower temperature. See, in this diagram, you can see a system 
which is uh, uh, here this this uh, diagram is showing the system and this there are the surrounding and uh, this system and surrounding are separated by the boundary so the concept of heat is here when the heat is flowing into the system here you can see the heat is flowing into the system so we will consider heat as positive and if the heat is flowing uh, out of the system in that condition we will consider the heat as the negative here when the heat is flowing into the system the heat will be positive and the heat is flowing out of the system the heat will be negative and if we consider any wall which permit heat flow that type of wall is called the diathermic wall and any wall which is not permitting the heat transfer that type of wall is called adiabatic wall so we can define here as uh, the adiabatic process easily adiabatic process is the process where there is no heat transfer occur and only work transfer occur between the system and surrounding so adiabatic process means the heat transfer is zero and the unit of heat uh, we consider as joule and the unit of work we take as kilowatt or watt generally the amount of heat transfer always depends on the intermediate state intermediate state is the state in between the initial and final state of the system so when the system changes from initial to final state and through which the system passes it is called path it is called path and uh, so the heat transfer is always a path function we can say the heat transfer is always a path function and this dq is always an inexact differential it is always an inexact differential we can write it as from initial to final state integration from 1 to 2 dq that is equivalent to q 1 to and this dq is always an inexact differential and for work transfer for work transfer it is integration from process 1 to 2 dw equal to w1 to pdv that work is always a pdv work when there is a pressure difference occur it cause work transfer and when there is a temperature difference occur it cause a heat transfer so we can say the temperature is the main cause and heat transfer is the effect if we write here q1 2 equal to 1 to 2 dq t d x if we write here q12 equal to integration from 1 to 2 t dx where t we are considering as intensive property and x we are considering as extensive property so the amount of heat transfer when the system changes from state 1 to state 2 is always depends on the path function so dq we can say is always an inexact differential here we can write here dq equal to t d t d x so we can write here dx equal to 1 by t dq see dq is the inexact differential so if we multiply this dq by 1 by t and if we are taking 1 by t as the integrating factor here we are taking 1 by t as the integrating factor 
so by multiplying the dq with integrating factor the dq become the exact differential this is only valid for quasi static processes and if we want to draw uh, the pv diagram for the work transfer this is the pv diagram and we have taken two processes initial process and the final process this is initial process 1 this is final process 2 so here this area is representing the total work transfer this is representing the total work transfer and this is w12 equal to p d v similarly if we want to draw the uh, tx diagram for the heat transfer so it will be t x and we are taking similarly two processes process one and two initial and final process so similarly this will be this area will represent as heat transfer this area will represent as heat transfer that is q12 equal to 1 to 2 t d x there are generally two type of heats we can define one is the specific heat and another is the latent heat so let us take first the specific heat. Uh, the specific heat is basically the amount of heat required to raise a unit mass of substance through a unit rise in temperature. This is the uh, definition of specific heat. The amount of heat required to raise a unit mass of substance through a unit rise in temperature. We can denote the specific heat by C. And the formula for specific heat is C equal to Q by M into delta T. This is the formula of specific heat where Q is the amount of heat transfer, M is the mass of substance and delta T is the rise in temperature. For gases, it depends on the process like uh, for constant pressure process, we generally denote it as Cp and for this is for constant pressure process and for constant volume process it is generally called cv so this is for constant volume process so for solid and liquid it generally depends on processes and the product of mass and specific heat we generally call the heat capacity here c cp and cv c cp and cv are generally uses for heat capacity second is latent heat we can define the latent heat as the amount of heat required to uh, cause a phase change in unit mass of substance at constant pressure and temperature to change the phase of the substance this is the uh, definition of latent heat we can subdivide the latent heat into three categories latent heat of fusion latent heat of vaporization and latent heat of sublimation in these are the three types of the latent heat latent heat is generally denoted by l so let us take uh, the latent heat of fusion first the amount of heat transferred to melt a unit mass of solid into liquid is generally known as the latent heat of fusion or we can also say to freeze the liquid to solid to freeze the liquid to solid the amount of heat required or amount of heat transfer is also known as the latent heat of fusion and it is generally denoted by this l fu fu is denoting the fusion latent heat of fusion now let us take the second latent heat of vaporization uh, we can define the latent heat of vaporization as 
the amount of heat transfer which is required to vaporize unit mass of liquid into vapor or to condense the vapor into liquid this is called the latent heat of vaporization and uh, this uh, latent heat of vaporization is denoted by l v a p v a p is uh, denoting the latent heat of vaporization and this is highly sensitive to pressure also this latent heat of vaporization is highly sensitive to uh, pressure and i forgot to tell you about the latent heat of fusion here the latent heat of fusion is not affected by pressure here latent heat of fusion is not affected by pressure but the latent heat of vaporization is highly sensitive to pressure third type of latent heat is latent heat of sublimation so the latent heat of sublimation is the amount of heat transfer which is required to convert a unit mass of a unit mass of solid to vapor or from vapor to solid directly from solid to vapor or from vapor to solid so this is about the latent heat in next lecture i will discuss about the first law of thermodynamics Thanks for watching the video and subscribe the channel for more lectures.